This video does not promote the use of illegal substances, link, or source illegal narcotics nor facilitate them. This video falls under the educational section as it does not show or condone the use of any substance, but rather objectively describes the psilocybin and psilocin content of varying wild mushrooms across the continent from a mycology standpoint, and to be used as harm reduction as there are many deadly lookalikes. For this reason, I'll make it absolutely clear that psilocybin containing mushrooms are a schedule one substance in the United States, meaning it is as dangerous as heroin, has no medicinal value or use whatsoever, and has a high possibility for abuse and misuse, including addiction. It is also illegal in many other countries, so do not harvest, consume, or use any substance which is illegal in your jurisdiction, and always obey your local laws and government. YouTube's policy of harmful or dangerous content has not been crossed in this video as it is not breaking the criteria required to issue a strike against this video. This video not only is labeled under harm reduction education, but strictly follows all guidelines that are required for this video to be public knowledge. We're just going to go through a list of the psilocybe species first, then we're going to do Panaeolus, and then we're going to do Gymnopolis, so we can have all the genuses which contain psilocybin here that would be likely that people would be able to find. Uh, there are some other species, but or genuses, but I'm going to leave those out. Um, because, like, for example, Massospora, parasitic cicada decomposing fungus that, you know, just not going to happen. So, all right. Um, so first on this list, we have uh, azorescence at the top. Uh, now, they have the highest uh, psilocybin content per weight, uh, as far as, like, per gram. However, uh, they're also really small. So I want it to be known that uh, one singular cube would have more psilocybin than one singular azorescence, just because of the sheer size difference. So just keep that in mind that we're talking about grams, we're talking about uh, weight. Some of these mushrooms might be absolutely tiny and have a really high percentage, and it would take a lot of them to feel any of the effects. However, um, as far as the psilocybin goes, it's completely based on weight, so just keep that in mind. Uh, below that you have P. cerbica, um, and uh, that one is the most potent magic mushroom in Europe. And so that one can be found in Germany and other areas around that kind of region. Um, then you have uh, P. semilanciata, which is the most potent mushroom in the UK. Uh, and it also grows in certain parts of uh, western Washington and um, Oregon and California as well. I believe it's also been documented a little bit in the northeast uh, of the United States, that is. You have uh, Psilocybe baeocystis. Baeocystis is also known as the bottle cap mushroom because it has kind of this bottle cap looking uh, cap. Uh, it has a relatively high potency similar to uh, Psilocybe cyanescens, which is the most coveted mushroom that's common uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, you have P. tamponensis, which is more like a Florida tropical kind of, it's been sap found in Georgia and other states down there. Uh, and then you have the standard Psilocybe cubensis, uh, which is the most easy to grow, the easiest to cultivate, and uh, the most commonly found on the street or on the market. And lesser known mushrooms down at the bottom here, we have um, Psilocybe wellii. Um, and I, I understand some people say welly. I know the double I people say. I, I have always, since I started this about eight years ago, have been saying Stuntsii, Al and I. I just happen to say it like that. However, they've changed the names to Psilocybe carolescens. Um, and uh, this mushroom has uh, a little bit lower than cubes. They were thought to have been used by the Aztecs and the Mayans, uh, along with Aztecorum and Zapotecorum uh, and Psilocybe mexicana, uh, because it grows in that region. Um, you have Psilocybe hugshagani, and uh, hugshagani is um, this really interesting, like flying saucer, nipple kind of looking uh, cross between an azorescent and a semilanciata. Uh, and it has uh, a, an okay amount of uh, psilocybin in it. Uh, you have Psilocybe stuntsii, which is uh, really, really not potent. Um, and so much so that I found stuntsii, I think, on maybe like uh, eight or ten occasions. Um, usually I can just eyeball it and know that it's not gallerina at this point. Um, they will turn green on the rings or sometimes blue. Um, unlike gallerinas, but they don't really bruise the same way. They're very dark brown, um, and that is because they have a really low psilocybin content. Um, and so P. stuntsii uh, is one of those mushrooms that has been reported to have one of the most powerful visual trips if you do trip on it, but I think it takes like 14 grams dry, I believe, to get like an actual heroic dose out of it, which is a lot of mushroom to be consuming, but they say it is the most visual. Um, that's not scientifically backed up, but from what people say. Um, you have Psilocybe cyanofibrillosa, um, also known as the blue-haired psilocybe. Um, this one is found in the Pacific Northwest. I've found it on a couple occasions, but actually it's so low in psilocybin, even lower than Stuntsii, but a considerable amount, that it's uh, you never find it in like huge amounts and you would ever actually collect it. I usually just put it back down or say, well, that's cool, cyanofibrillosa, and then I, I leave because um, it's just not a mushroom worth picking. Just kind of let it grow and enjoy doing its thing. Um, also, it looks like some other mushrooms as well. Uh, and then you have Psilocybe liniformans. Uh, liniformans um, is probably the weakest mushroom, and I would strongly recommend against... Uh, I would not recommend that you try it. Uh, the same with Cyanofibrillosa or Stuntsia. 
All right, so next is Penaeolus, um, and I want you to know that I compiled this information because there is a lack of information online. So I went online, I uh, went to scientific journals and articles about concentrations of psilocybin, and I pulled data and information from multiple different sites and places on the internet. Uh, I'm relying solely on their information. This is not my own personal information. So I've created this chart. Um, at the very top, it says that Tropicalis and Cyanessens roughly have a similar percentage of psilocybins. And um, that would be the uh, both very tropical varieties. And then further north, you could find Olivaceus and Cinculus. Uh, and those ones have much lower concentrations. Uh, and then there's uh, Fimicola, which is um, very mildly psychoactive, uh, if really at all. Last but not least, uh, Gymnopolis, and this was the hardest one to find quality information on. Um, however, Gymnopolis luteofolius tested the highest at 0.45% psilocybin. Uh, Gymnopolis luteoviridis uh, tested relatively similarly, and Cyanopomacola and Perparatus also tested very similarly. It seems like Gymnopolis tends to be kind of the same across all species. Uh, Junionius, um, sorry, Junionia, Junionius. Uh, is uh, very, very mild, very weak, uh, and probably not worth uh, consumption.